Welcome back to Jeeping for Beginners, folks. Once again, my name is Josh, and today we are going to be talking about the mystery of the differential. I've seen so many posts online, a lot of people just really don't understand what goes on inside of a differential. So, I've got a major leak i got to take care of, and I've got to end up replacing my differential cover anyway. So I thought if I'm going to take everything apart, maybe I could actually show you piece by piece all the components that are inside of a diff, what they do, and why they're there. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. I think we're going to have some fun. Alright, and welcome back to the channel, folks. So today we are talking about differentials. Now, I chose this topic because I have a very major leak going on on my front differential, and I had to address it anyway. And I figured, well, if I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to fix it, then I might as well show you guys what's going on inside of a differential at the same time. Now, the differential itself is fine. My axle is fine. What's leaking is my actual cover. Now, I've had these covers on the Jeep now for, oh goodness, a better part of four or five years. I love them. They're all aluminum, they're lightweight, they keep the differential cool, and they're red. And I love having the red theme against the black Jeep. But about six months ago, when I went to service the front, the fill plug itself ended up stripping out, and it's caused a very major differential fluid leak. Unfortunately, I couldn't retap it, I couldn't actually repair it, and that differential cover has been on back order forever. But the good news is, is just last week, I got a hold of another one from Alloy USA. So excited. So this is brand new, has never been used, and is not stripped out which is the important part. So at the end of the video, we're gonna basically put this back on and seal everything back up so that I can take this thing back off road again. But in the meantime, like I said, we're gonna talk about what's going on inside the diff. So before we can get there, we gotta take everything apart. So let me show you how we get the differential cover off the differential to begin with. So we are gonna be servicing my front differential. There is more than enough room on the front of a Jeep in order to remove the cover and to service everything if you were to do this on your own. However, for the purpose of the video and the purpose of making this easy to see, I am actually going to remove my tie rod assembly out of the way and off the Jeep altogether so that it's easier for you to see. But I just want to point out, you don't necessarily have to take the tie rod off in order to do this service. As you can see, this thing is absolutely nasty. And I gotta tell you, not only is it a pain in the butt to be leaking fluid, but differential fluid stinks when it's spinning down the highway. So this is definitely gonna solve that issue too. But before we get the cover off and we can check out what's inside, we gotta get what little fluid is in there out. So we're gonna pop the drain plug. Now, if you were doing this on a factory axle, the drain plug for the axle itself is also right back here. You don't necessarily have to have a drain plug on your diff cover. I do, and it's more straight down, so it's easier to control, so I prefer to do it this way. Oh yeah. And it stinks. Just be forewarned, differential fluid is not the best smelling stuff in the world. Good lord. Oh, all right. We'll let that drain. We'll come back to this in a second. So now that it's all drained out, we're going to remove the bolts to get the differential cover off. If you are not replacing the differential cover and you're going to reuse the bolts that come out, then make sure you take your time and you don't strip them. They're small, they're easy to strip. If you're replacing the differential cover at the same time, most differential covers come with new bolts and new hardware, so you don't necessarily have to be quite as careful. However, you do gotta get them all out. Even though we drained it, there's always a little bit of fluid left in the bottom. So make sure you leave 
your uh, drain pan underneath it so that you don't make a mess. Now most applications, the differential cover won't necessarily come right off just by unbolting it. And that's because there is a layer of RTV sealant that is keeping the differential fluid, in, well, supposed to keep the differential fluid inside. That also acts like a glue. So once you get all the bolts out, sometimes you're going to need a screwdriver, like a flathead screwdriver or a pry bar, in order to break that seal so that we can get this off. Once you break the seal, it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure, but as you can see, there's the rest of that differential fluid. That's why we left the drain pan underneath, so we don't make a mess of Mama's garage floor here. Before we talk about the different components that are inside here, let's clean it up. The best product I've found in order to do that is actual brake cleaner. So let me grab a can of brake cleaner. Let's get this sprayed out. Don't worry, I promise, brake cleaner is not harmful to what you got going on in here. So, I'm gonna let this dry for just a second. We're gonna grab the camera, and we're gonna go over the individual components that you're seeing right here. All right, guys, so for the mystery of what exists inside of a differential, I would like to say that truthfully, it's really not all that complicated, but, we are going to cover the different components here. All right. So I chose to do this at home. Oh, ho, 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 ho. all right. So the big one is this one. This is your ring gear. Okay. These guys on the side, which are on both sides, is your main carrier bearings. Now, in my particular case, since I do have a factory Rubicon model, this in the center may look different than yours, as this is actually the factory Eaton e-locker setup, which is where the electronic plug and the little retainer pin comes in place. The ring gear is basically one of the most important components that you have going on. The second most important component is what turns this ring gear. This guy is mounted directly to the carrier. Bitch. As you can see, the ring gear is mounted directly to the carrier in multiple different spots. When the ring gear is turned, that's what actually turns the axle. Now, in order to do that, you need a pinion gear. Now, being as that it is a Rubicon model, it might be extremely difficult to see the pinion, but I'm gonna give it a shot here. All the way in the very back, that's your pinion gear. That's where the drive shaft comes in, okay? And that's what actually turns the ring gear. Now you notice how it is oddly shaped. It's that way so that it can spin in one direction and spin the ring gear in a completely different direction. So 
So guys, seriously, it's really not that complicated. There's only two to three major components that's in there. Now, if you have to remove the ring and pinion, or you're looking at <clears throat> swapping your gears, and we start having to deal with the shims, the bearings, and everything else in there, okay, that definitely gets a lot more complicated. But truthfully, when it comes to propelling the vehicle forward, you've got your main pinion gear that spins with your drive shaft, usually in a clockwise direction. And then you've got your ring gear that's attached up to it that is going to spin based on the speed of your pinion gear, and that actually turns the entire carrier assembly. Inside of that carrier assembly is the axle shafts that go to each one of your wheels. So as it's turning, it's turning the wheels. Now this is a front differential, not the rear. I just had the rear rebuilt. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's a story in and of itself. Um, so I didn't wanna take that apart just yet because I'm still on the braking period. Um, however, I wanted to show you guys, it's really not that complicated. Now, the whole purpose of doing this was to solve my leak. That differential cover, when I flipped it over on the inside, is also actually cracked on the inside. I guess that's what happens after five years of abuse. So I'm going to get the new one on. But I'm going to show you guys a couple of things that you need to keep in mind before you just go slap a new differential cover onto your axle. There's a few more steps that you need to take. Before we get there, as far as the differential and the gears go, there's one more thing I want to point out. If you're ever curious what the gear ratio is, and this is something that a lot of people don't really understand when we talk about 373 to 1 or 410 to 1 or 513 to 1. If you're ever curious what the gear ratio is, for example, you bought a used Jeep that maybe was already modified and you don't know if the previous owner had already replaced, upgraded, or changed the gear ratio. Here's how you figure that out. First of all, the big number that's there, which will, in my case is 410, is 4.10. That's how many times the drive shaft is gonna spin around or the pinion gear is gonna spin for every one time that the ring gear spins completely around. So that being said, the best way to figure out what your gear ratio is, is to take a piece of chalk or paint on a paint pen and mark one of your teeth on the ring gear and then by hand turn the drive shaft marking how many full rotations you have in that drive shaft it takes for that ring gear to make it all the way back to the front that's the easiest way that i know how to do it in my case i would have to turn it just over four times before my ring gear would make a full rotation now, I can get into the math, if you like, on how many teeth on a ring gear versus how many teeth on a pinion gear, but you know what? That gets extremely complicated. Easiest way to figure it out is if you don't make it all the way to four on a Jeep, that's usually 373s. If you make it just past the four mark, that's 411. If you make it all the way to five and more, then it's probably 513s, somewhere in that range. At least it'll kind of give you an idea. But like I said, before we get the differential cover on, let me show you a couple more steps that you need to take so that we can make sure it seals properly. All right, guys, so before we put the differential cover back on, a couple things that we gotta keep in mind. I don't know if you can see it on film. I, sometimes I hate the way the camera works, but you do have leftover residue from the glue that was on the previous differential. You will always have leftover residue. You need to be able to get all of this off. And then once all of that thick stuff is off, which usually is pretty easy and it just peels right off, which is nice, don't get me wrong, Now, in order for the RTV to sit perfectly, you need a nice, smooth surface. Again, I don't know if you can see this in the film, but this is not a smooth surface because this has the residue from all the old glue. So, best way I found to do it, and definitely wear a pair of safety glasses, is a little wire whiz wheel and just clean it up.
There. Now it's all nice and clean, smooth, and ready to be resealed. As far as sealing the differential, there's all kinds of different products on the market and everybody has a different opinion as to which product to use. In my case, I'm going to use the right stuff. This is a heavy duty gasket maker and it sets in just 90 minutes, which the advantage of that is we're not at a shop. It's not going to hang in the air for two to three hours in order to cure before we fill it up with differential fluid. In our case, in 90 minutes or less, this will be set so that we can fill it up with differential fluid and get it back outside. So you don't need a whole lot of this. Let me show you how to put this on. So. You don't need a whole lot. The directions say anywhere from an eighth to a quarter of an inch of a bead. I'm not gonna sit here and measure it, but basically, just like that, but all the way around. You can go through with your finger and smooth it out if you like to, but the truth of the matter is, is when you put the cover on, it's going to spread and it's going to seal anyway. So now we put the cover on Now you want to let it sit for, I don't know, two, three minutes or so, just so it starts to harden just a little bit. You don't want it to be too, too wet. Make sure when you put the cover on that she's going on sh straight. Oh shit. Son of a bitch. Okay. So, number one rule when you go to replace any parts on your vehicle is you should always confirm 100% of the time that it's actually the correct part. So it turns out that this is not the correct differential cover for my Dana 44 in the front. Now, I checked the box. The box says it's for a Dana 44. I checked my receipt, it says it's for a Dana 44. So I ordered the correct part. I made the assumption that I got the correct part when I started this whole process, but that's what happens when you assume. So this is actually for a Dana 30. This does not fit on my Jeep. So unfortunately, I am actually right back in the same boat that I was before we began this whole process. I've got to clean up my old differential cover as best I can, and I've got to reinstall that guy back on the Jeep for now so I can return this and get the correct part. Yes, it gets frustrating, folks, but just because you order the right part doesn't mean the right part is what's in the box. So I knew better. I've been doing this for a long time. I should have checked it out first. I encourage you definitely compare and check it out first to make sure that the parts you have are correct before you try to install them. So that being said, we're going to basically stop the video right here. I'm going to clean up my old differential cover and get it back installed so that I can uh, drive the Jeep for the next couple of days. Uh, however, I do hope that you get the gist of what it is that we are trying to accomplish here. And I hope that the explanation of the mystery of what's inside of your differential was a little easier to understand. It's really not that complicated. There's only a couple of components in there. Some people get really scared of it. If you gotta do a major service, it can get complicated, and that's something that we can address later on down the road. If you'd like, you could put that in the comments. Eventually, I am gonna re-gear the Jeep, and I can show you guys how to do that. However, like I said, I just wanted to solve the mystery of which component is for what. So, in the meantime, folks, like I said, I should have known better. I should have looked at the product before I started this video. <laughs> Unbelievable. Anyways, once again, my name is Josh. This is Jeeping for Beginners. Feel free to put it down in the comments. Feel free to call me an idiot if you'd like to. Uh, it's not going to hurt my feelings. I promise I've got thick skin. So <laughs> stay safe, happy Jeeping, and we will see you next time. God.
All right, guys, so here's what we're going to do. The giveaways for 2024 are going to be teased in subscriber-only videos, which means you're going to have to subscribe to the channel in order to get the opportunity to win some cool Jeep stuff. So what are you waiting for? The button's right there. Go ahead. Subscribe. Do it. Do it. Do it.